really think in game three, OMG dropped the ball by um, not going over to blue side, not choosing that into uh, like first pick or ban away that Tristana if they are on red side. I really feel like that was a mistake, but they've rectified that in game four. Now, WWE, do you have an answer to the Tristana first pick yourselves? They're locking in the Zeri. That was very powerful to stay in game number two, which they walked away with the Tristana Zeri double carries. Finally, I won. He gets himself a Rakan game. And Rakan still maintaining priority as Sharfon gets his Lee Sin and a Renata for PP God as well. Now, important note on that Renata, neither of these teams likes Callista. There hasn't been any Callista bans today because neither team plays Callista. We've seen yeah. so little Callista from either of these teams, and we've seen both of them consistently ban the pick away. So that Renata locked in for PP God, but whether or not we get a Callista alongside it, I'd say probably not. No, I mean, I am almost certain that this is going to be Abel going towards the Tristana. He was playing it last year in bot lane out of meta, and basically made it meta in that bot side. He was banned against OMG an awful lot in their 2023 uh, roster. Coming into this one, you know, you've now got Renata, who can both buff up the attack speed and the movement speed of Tristana. Works very well against um, the Rakan. So you can kind of handshake him out of his grand entrance. That could be very important. But the problem is here in the other part of this draft, you now have two dash champions going into a poppy, which is likely going to the jungle for Team WE as well. And it's another blind pick Lee Sin, which can potentially get very, very punished. It wouldn't surprise me now to see Wayward once again going towards something like that. Gragas, which can kind of pop people out of the play. Might also be something like an angle for... <laughs> I would have almost suggested the um, Talia for Fofo, but that's been banned away by WE. Kind of funny to see the Azir ban, honestly. It yeah, feels he's like here and available, you know, folks. Azir is finally back and available. We've got Fofo in the series against Angel, two prolific Azir players. It's not been touched so far this series, but now with the Tristana taken away from Fofo with the Talia band, it is going to be that Azir removed from the mix as well. You could ban Hui as well if you want to. Depends whether Angel wants that for himself, but I don't know. It depends whether you think yeah. you would be able to get it for yourself. There you go. So it is going to be taken away from Fofo. Um, the thing is, I feel like if you lock in away on the other side, you're a lot of the time I think you're happy to play Tristana um, into that one. And that's so Fofo, he's had his pool pinched a little bit. He wants to play something backline DPS. What have you got available for that? You wouldn't get the last pick here. Um, your mid lane, you potentially can do. Wayward thinks this is a happy blind pick for him as well. Yeah, the Rek'Sai, just so difficult to deal with in that top side on this patch. We've seen it across the world. Wayward clearly has been practicing as Angel goes for the blind pick mid of the Annie. And Cube gonna take this new deer match. We got, we got one one game of Cube, not on yeah. deer. I think that's an absolute win. Uh, this will be his, I think, 21st game of so. Udyr yep. this year, as it's his third game of it in this series. So that same old matchup up top, and the Carver made it all the way to the final pick for Fofo to lock it in. So, Karma tends to beat out the Annie very early on, um, and then most of the laning phase, actually. The bonus of this Annie is once you get out of laning phase, Poppy can't stop flashes, can stop dashes, but not Angel going for us for a big Tibbers. Now, that could potentially set up for a big, big team fight. You need an engage, team fight engage coming in from somewhere. Renata always good as secondary engage, but besides that, you don't really got the best ability to lock down team fight AoE, so a lot of, um, a lot of responsibility on Angel in this mid lane. Both these mid laners, we talked about it in that last game. They've been trying to find themselves homes. Neither of these players have really lasted more than a year on a team for the last kind of stretch of their career. They used to be almost franchise players for their last teams. Angel on Suning. We've got Fofo, who was back on JT and back in the Tayat Day as well, back there for multiple years. Beyond that, they have not really found a place to plant their roots. Now it is coming down to the quick, down to that edge of the knife here to survive an LPL playoffs. They want to make sure that they've got themselves a bit more of a homestead underneath them. They want to stamp their name onto these organizations. Like you say, both of them bouncing around the LPL. Angel feels like he has been becoming somewhat of a franchise name on OMG this split. Manages to get third All-Pro team in the mid lane, but can he redeem OMG as we head into game number four? WE on match point, on series point. Remember, this is the gauntlet. No double elimination just yet. OMG, a single loss away from elimination as WE stand poised here in game four.
<laughs> it feels like the OMG fans are losing faith. <laughs> As the WEJO, it's been pretty even so far today. The WEJO now far outstripping that of OMG. And honestly, I'm not that surprised. It's been such a disappointing series from OMG in these last two games. Yeah. W have felt far, far away from them. This composition, though, does feel a little bit more playable than uh, what we've been seeing in the rest of the series from OMG. Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, OMG, they've kind of slept walked their way into a couple of really bad drafts in their losses. And credit to WE having good counters available for it. Cube's going to walk into Tremor Sense. They know he's going to walk around the corner, which means that he's going to take a big trade. That's a problem. He's not going to be able to get back towards um, lane uh, after regenning in base, which means that Wayward is probably going to get himself a good early phase of that lane now as well. Jungle Path, I think, both going top, uh, top to bot side. We'll see if Hung actually goes uh, from top, goes down towards bots, and does does a bit of a reverse clip. But I'd imagine both of these lanes, uh, both these jungles, want to go towards bot side and influence this Tristana Renata lane. We'll see if they can get into that lane and start someone off with a lead. I'm looking towards Abel, who, you know, we're talking about the mid laners and potentially being franchise players. I mean, Abel really is the franchise player yeah. for OMG. On that Tristana, a signature pick for him on a pick that he can really actively influence the game. Does feel like this is the opportunity for OMG to somewhat redeem themselves for the previous two games. Let's see if they can make it happen. Obviously, Udi up at the top side. We saw him chunked as the laning phase started. I don't know if it even matters. <laughs> he might have sustained this champion has once he's hit level two. Yes, that turtle stance. He's going to be just about fine. As uh, we'll see how this early game is going to pan out. As you mentioned, the jungle is panning. Pathing towards the bottom side. Hongs just finishes red. He's already moving down towards that lane. Hard engage available for the side of WE. Bit more difficult for OMG, but the flash handshake is a play we've seen a few times across the course of this Ooh, year. Look, God's El certainly able. Look, folks, um, LPL observers are really, really quite uh, like savage. Just zoomed down on Able missing the cannon there, by the way, with the bomb burst on it. <laughs> so shame for him on that one. Um, but we are at least seeing Abel and PPO getting wave control. I mean, with the explosive shop, you tend to do so. Um, the big thing about Renata being played alongside attack speed carries in particular, particularly ones that go lethal tempo, is that you can stack up your lethal tempo, and instead of playing around your HP hitting zero, you play around it hitting, well, around it, uh, rather, it not hitting zero. You play around it hitting zero and then killing people with your lethal tempo stacked up and just turning and burning onto a target to get yourself that reset. Particularly with Tristana in early game, uh, you need a couple of levels to get yourself uh, the full bomb charge. Uh, however, if you do manage to survive a little longer, stack up your lethal tempo and then play around the bailout, you can pop that bomb earlier into the game than you would do otherwise. That's typically where a lot of Tristanas have actually gone towards um, Hail of Blades in the past as well for very early kill lanes in bot side. Renata can very much be a threat towards the bot side, and with Xiaofang taking that bot side scuttle, that can help them continually push. <laughs> Ward actually going to be committed by Xiaofang. Suspected Hung might be sticking around on the play realizes that is the case. Hung moves up to the top side. He'll be able to get that Scuttle Crab. His Raptors are respawning as well as Wayward. I don't know if going back to that other tunnel was the play. My goodness. I think that Ooh. was a misclick. And my god, it could have been a solo kill. Well, it could have been. He goes right back into the Wingborn Storm. That extra kind of burning pits around Cube. So Wayward, despite the fact that he came into lane with a huge health advantage against the Udyr, blows the flash early. And you're absolutely right. Didn't matter at all as soon as that turtle stance was unlocked to sustain through from Cube. And this is now another issue. So, uh, what's our checklist for Team WE? Wayward with individual pressure, getting involved early. Well, that might be a problem now. You're blowing flashes against this Udyr. And now the other thing is Iwandi being locked, uh, unlocked from lane. If you're against now a Tristana and Renata that can just continually push in, that's also going to be yep. harder. So the checklist for WE and how we know they play is not looking great right now. They're going to have to show us that they can overcome that. And I want to point out that that point of the flash being burnt on Wayward as well is like Rek'Sai is kind of like top lane Annie, you know, where, yeah, you can engage, but only if you have flash. Like without flash, Rek'Sai, unless you find some kind of miracle flank, it's really difficult to find any consistent engage on this champion. You kind of need that flash available. We saw on the positive games from from Wayward on this Rex, I think it was game two of the series. He roamed mid, made a big play on towards Angel, like was able to influence the game. All of those plays were flash plays. That's how Rek'Sai works when you want to influence those lanes. So it does sort of mean you've got five minutes here for WE where Wayward won't be able to get out of that top lane, won't be able to have much of an impact on the rest of the map. And that's exactly what we kind of want to see from Wayward. That has been the way that this team has succeeded through their top lane. 
So Wayward is now uh, proxying the wave in top side. He has his poppy on top side too. He's just taking grubs. That will be in trade for bot lane. Just going to again be contentedly shoved in. Dragon going down in favor of OMG as well. It's going to be the chemsec first one down. With, uh, that gives you heal and shield power, of course, and it gives you the uh, tenacity as well. It's quite valuable, I suppose, in terms of what are you going to get around that. In terms of heals and shields, it doesn't apply to lifesteal. Pretty sure it does apply to Udyr, though, which is kind of annoying when he goes to Yeah, it's, it's on hit healing route That's as opposed to lifesteal. Really nasty. So the, I think basically they coded heal and shield power to not affect lifesteal anymore. I think that got a little bit broken uh, for a little while. Uh, it was really annoying in Arena when you had so many forms of healing and uh, life steals. They just said, look, we've got to separate these two out. Heal all the same, though. OMG, I like the base stats of that one. We don't always talk about the base stats of some of the dragons besides, you know, Infernal and Mountain. Actually quite valuable in this game. Yep, yeah, I can see that as well. The uh, early game strength Hobbit. Udyr, definitely the best champion for using a lot of different traits, honestly, because his kit is he so does varied. everything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it does get, does get a lot of value from those early game objectives. WE, as always, you anticipate a really reasonably slow one anyway. You've got the Karma in the mid lane, you've got Zeri AD carry, they're quite happy to scale things up. You see Tibbers was used in the mid lane, didn't actually get any damage down onto Fofo by the looks of things, but will just be used as well to get priority to be able to clear these waves, and Angel finally gets to answer one minion wave. Fofo has had prio this entire laning phase. Oh, that's why it didn't do anything, it missed. See that in the picture in picture. Right, okay. So I was, thought, I was just wondering if it was going to be, oh, he ulted into a shield and Merc treads. That's it. Nope, just straight up misses. Close run stuff. And now we talked uh, talked about the importance of this kind of series symbolically for both these mid laners trying to find themselves a new home really after so many years bouncing between teams. I think, uh, you know, uh, Fofo and Angel both been on three, four teams. Uh, they never really stayed on a team longer than a year for uh, the past kind of era of their. Uh, different careers, but stuff like that. It's very close to hitting. You can quite combo up with Xiaofeng there. Xiaofeng himself trying to make himself uh, a home and yep. OMG coming up as a rookie player. It's a bit of an awkward moment. Yeah, it feels like for Fofo, you know, he's kind of been moving each year. For, for Angel, though, like his last three splits have been on different teams. You know, had all of his time on Sooning, that then became Weibo. Spent a year on that Weibo roster. Was replaced by Xiao, who then spent you know, one split on RNG, one split on NIP, neither of them really working out for it. Now joins OMG. Goes. Cube could be in trouble in the top side, but then again, he is Udyr, so yeah. he's just gonna walk away. He does not care for your mortal concerns like junglers and wave control. He will push the wave and then he will run away. Ghost has gone down, and that's uh, fine for him. It's a summoner gone, but it's not particularly the most valuable thing taken away by um, a hang in the jungle. Worth noting, of course, you know, once you hit level 3, level 4 and Poppy, you want to get involved in the game more often than not. This game, it's not really been an early game Poppy performance. Now, you do have a lot of value into late game team fights because you can you know, throw away. Um, Parts of this team composition, the Poppy Ultimate can be a very important one. OMG are looking to 5v5, and you can also stop the Tristana and the Lee Sin getting themselves a lot of different value in these team fights as well. But still, no early game Poppy value. That's a little bit of a concern. This champion typically wants to start getting gold advantage under their belts. See if Hung can find a way into the game as you know, after the after the first game, I thought this maybe Cube had figured this match about, but the longer the series has gone on, the better Wayward has looked up in this top lane, consistently putting pressure on now. Cube is out of mana. He's going to have to head back to base. Does have his TP coming just off a of cooldown now. So he will be able to return to that top lane. Wayward doing a good job of getting some pressure down in that top side. I mean, we talked about the level one chunk. It has not had any impact in the top lane whatsoever. No. <laughs> First three groups take by WE, though. This time around, OMG yeah. move up to the top side. See, let's stay didn't pop the ghost just yet, forcing the jump out of Abel. That's uh, fine by him, Curse your shard, very good lane. Uh, now there's no jump here, and you've Ooh. just hit the ult there. That is a dead Tristana. I mean, it's it's easy as that, isn't it? First blood for WE. Stay sets it up, Iwandi and Hung knocking out of the park. So, PP God, um, kind of shown that he was on reset. He isn't there to protect his AD carry. Abel had pushed up way too far and couldn't clear that next wave. That bot lane positioning by OMG's duo. No one there to save them. Good gold on the board, and it's to stay's um, Zeri as well. Had a very good game two of that one. 
So it's going to be a bit of a concern now for OMG. And we were just talking about getting Poppy on the board early. It's a little later, but does help with that bot side dive. So helps out in that regard. Now, Dragon, up in 30 seconds. OMG, if they were to get that one, it would be a nice victory for them to get themselves that um, stacking down. Abel didn't blow any summoners, importantly, in that last play either. So WE, they might have taken the immediate gold in pocket. They do have great vision control after controlling the yeah. bot side of the map. But they have just used a lot of summoners. And OMG might have more combat power now as a result of that. One big thing is they got that static shift. Abel not having much power on that Tristana right now as Hung just dives over the wall. Double knock up with the ultimate as well. Oh Popo no. there to support with damage. Tippers does just nothing. So I'm not sure if he missed or if Hung just. If Merc Treads is enough to completely I, mitigate the ult at this I, I point. I don't know whether he had the passive stacked up. He drops it down, gets no value for it. And, you know, the Merc Treads are there anyway. You're absolutely right. So despite the fact that OMG, they had the, the combat power advantage. You know, a summon is down on WE. There are some ultimates down as well. They can't set up appropriately to get into River before they kind of panic and press their buttons. We said that both these teams, they've had their struggles with objective and particularly dragon setups. It's another kind of uh, reminder of that one. Let's WE get that dragon. Tough to watch as well from Angel having such a bad game when he was one of the players on OMG that we were coming in saying he could be the deciding factor here. Shafang off the oh vision. Oh boy. He's gone behind him. That's what the observers. There we oh. go. There's the kick. In he goes. Gets the kick. The bomb is there. Shafang finds a kill. Finds a way in. And finds a lifeline for OMG. As it felt like they were against the ropes. Now an opportunity. Right. This is important because now Tristana can get a bomb on tower potentially. Ah, oh, they can't even do that. I think Abel really needs a reset, as you as you called out earlier. He didn't get himself that first item. It's a real shame if he could have used that opportunity to get a um, a bomb onto tower. That's maybe one or two plates. Some good gold in pocket. Can't quite manage that one. He needs to reset. Get himself that first item because if he were to reset later, maybe OMG couldn't turn up for something around top side around Herald. That might be an indication that they want to play towards that one instead of going towards bot side and getting a load of gold there. Shout out Flash, Ward Hop. It's not the Ward Hop Flash. It's a very quick combo. State cannot react to that one in time. It's absolutely decked. Boot to the face from Shao Funk. You'll love to see it. He's gone for uh, the Eclipse as well. This is going to be quite a scary lease in. I do wonder how much value he'll be able to get against the Poppy later on in the game. But right now... He is hitting like a freight train and stay. Taking a chunk from Abel as well, who now has finished that Kraken Slayer. He can be a little bit more aggressive. And without the supports in the picture, suddenly this bot lane doesn't look so easy for the Zeri. It becomes very, very difficult to trade against the Tristana. I know an Abel, a uh, very confident Tristana player. He's played it again um, as a kind of pocket pick across the last few years, even when it's been falling out of meta for bot lane specifically. He's brought it back. Fair amount of time. Is the handshake going to land? No, it isn't. It's doubled away from Bio Wandy. So, remember, Abel chose not to stay in bot side and put a um, a bomb on tower. He decided to go for a quick reset and then get himself uh, back out onto the map more quickly. I was wondering whether that would be towards something like a Herald, but it feels like with AD carries, both just trading wave clear with um, explosive charge and then that ship. It doesn't really feel like there's been a bot side advantage that claimed from that. And Herald right nope. now, not going to be taken on spawn. You know that Static Shiv is a strong item when Tristana's not getting prior over Zeri. Yes. Like, <laughs> that's how you know Static yeah. Shiv is real strong right now. Tristana, there's barely any lanes that doesn't get priority. The passive wave play from the E, but yeah, fantastic stuff here. Coming out from WE, able to weather the storm mostly against OMG. Xiaofeng found that one play, but no objectives off of it, huh? Waiting by the wall. Tibbers comes down, but does absolutely nothing again, and I want to just bolts out of there he was moving at the speed of light yeah, you can see that uh, you know angel already landed the the stun from uh from the Q. doesn't end up using the tibbers that well i guess he has malignance so you know with the between malignance and boots his alt haste is on like 80 or something angel's gonna get caught down here he does have stun left up again so it's not gonna be that much achieved by w there is see shaofong just baiting out the w's tibbers, tibbers kind of winning the 1v3 there honestly <laughs> doing so much damage across the team Will be answered there by Fofo's Mantra Q, though. Does make things difficult to follow up on. Drake not up for another minute and a half. It's one apiece so far. Herald up on the top side of the map. We're even on Grubs. Gold is within touching distance. This is the game we have been waiting for. Both teams actually have win conditions. Neither team has completely fallen apart in the first few minutes. Maybe we actually get somewhat of an even game here. It's Angel 
Oh, gets a stun, oh. and the Q lands as well. Say one HP and burn down. Angel finds his mark. Answer onto Sharp Bung, though, as the route will come on through. Angel gets the shield onto his jungler, but it will not save him. One for one in the bottom side. Oh, Sharp Bung just overstaying a little too long after getting a great kill on to stay. Angel picks it up, but it's really Sharp Bung that um, ends up Get doing the lion's share of the work in that one. Dragon, minute, Harold up right now. Both those objectives have been kind of um, not been set up for necessarily. It's more about trying to play through these lanes and try and play towards some kills like this. Angel teleporting behind Fofo. Fofo tries to get out this time the Tibbers hits, and this time Fofo has nowhere to go. He's burning down. He's trying to survive and buy time, but it will not matter. Angel now, two kills. He's gone from missing Tibbers in lane and achieving nothing to suddenly he's two and zero, and it's reminiscent of that first game of the series. I also appreciate PP God flashing away from the second part of the W so that you didn't get an extra healing there on the Karma. Uh, this is the great kill on to stay, though tries to get the stun on to stay as he's in tower aggro. Doesn't quite manage to do that, but still, enough damage with his jungler to get that one finished off, despite the fact that Angel was very low HP. He's a uh, uh, nice kill there. Then Shafan just doesn't realize that Fofo's roped out. He gets completely obliterated by the one item spike of that karma. Of course, things go beyond that point. We were saying that, oh wait, oh, hang on, that's an instant God's take of the sake. Herald, and then it's an instant proc of it. You can charge it into mid lane right now. Will it kill straight up? I guess it will. I think so. I think it's okay. okay. That's fine. I think that was a mistake and put down at first, potentially. But all the same, it's going to be two uh, slams into mid lane. So you know what? It goes well, that ends well. Two charges into yeah. mid lane. That's valuable for W. We'll say it was on purpose. That's going to be a tier two taken in the mid lane. Yeah, no, good value. And, you know uh, what? Credit to it. But that's one yeah, of the better yeah, hero plays that we've seen. Play. Most you of the time, know, you maybe, don't see a clean Maybe it wasn't by team. accident. Maybe it wasn't by accident, honestly. Maybe just going for the tempo play as Flash over the wall, Shao Funk in trouble. Oh, he misses the Q on the Drake. Manages to get over to Angel though, so he's still alive, but Stay makes short work of that fact. And Tibbers, not long for this world. Angel, not long for this world, because Hong has found him on the flank as well. The snowballing from WE has been clean. And their Dragon setup has been so much cleaner than OMG's. You can see that Hung and Iwandi have done a really good job of putting vision around the areas of the map that they want to fight. And OMG have not been prepared for that. They've been caught out when they've been going towards bot side of River. You can see that even though Xiaofang and Angel played well through the bot lane in that last phase of play, they can't make that happen again. It's going to be a free Dragon over the side of WE as a kind of a consequence of that. The extra kill gold is definitely not going to be a miss as well. It's Poppy starting to get into this mid game really, really effectively. Kind of criticized a bit of the early game, saying that they weren't really getting involved. You know what? It's a really good job getting onto the board beyond that point. OMG cannot afford to be this sloppy around Vision and walking into the big, big damage of the Karma at one item and the CC of the Poppy. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> just going straight past the tower using his tunnels here. Obviously, Xiaofeng in the area. I don't think it would have been safe to proxy there, as I wonder will spot out the OMG jungler. Actually, nearly managed to get the blue buff with the Q there. It was like 20 HP. Xiaofeng will secure his caps. PP God trying to move in and deny the potential vision that Iwandi was looking for. That control ward will be protected by Iwandi, and Hung moves in as well. So, complete vision dominance in this top side for WE. So, they try and set up for a tier one tower. I don't think they can quite finish it here, but. Good bit of damage done. So this is one of the things which I've really not been confident about from, from OMG. I'm not a big fan of it. When you see W moving towards topside like this, you can see that Abel was running towards topside, looking for a fight, but they're not looking for a cross map. You see that Angel's got a teleport ready now, but Abel, he doesn't know where he wants to be. He's cleared out mid wave. He's slow to potentially respond to something topside now as well. WE get themselves a top lane tower, and OMG are not in position for a clean cross map. WE, once they get Iwandi and Wayward onto the map and able to get control of their various lanes, they are very, very good at orchestrating the map beyond that point. And considering how poorly they managed to stick towards that identity, towards the back half of the split, they've done a great job of it in the series today. Fantastic wall slam. The dragon setup on top of their vision has been so potent. Stay flips over the wall, does a bit of roller skating. Um, maybe he's playing some Tony Hawk's Pro Skater after that one. By the way, that one's been a hell of a lot of kick flips into the face of OMG. So they walk over the great one side play. S plus combo <laughs> <laughs> coming out as he gets his grind on. Harley, I think that was a FS Crooked uh, grind yeah, over the wall there. Yeah, definitely one of those. Definitely not 50 50. That was 100% in their favor. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good. But I know a couple of moves. <laughs> I, I used to skate yeah. all the time. I've got a friend that was a uh, semi-pro skater. Shout out, Rowan, if you watch it. But, yeah. Either way, 
this is a, a hell of a lead from WE. And honestly, I'm just disappointed in OMG compared to some of the games we've seen this year. It felt like we could see more from them. But I'm also very impressed by WE. I'm a little bit like, WE, if you could do this all along, what were some of those regular season games? Like, the dip. I, I, yeah. I literally talked to you in prepping for this series. I was like, what on earth changes for WE between their wins and their losses? Because they feel like totally different teams. Feels like that in this series as well. As they've started Baron off, and it doesn't again. seem like OMG are even aware that this is going on. And once they're going to be again, forced away. They don't have the vision. Down. They don't have the vision. They have a blue trinket, but they cannot approach. Baron gets burned down, and once again, the objective control from WE is just superior. And they go for Wayward, who, let's be honest, there's no universe you're killing this Rex I right now. Flashes out to safety. WE, they not only get themselves a Baron, they get out of dodge without a single casualty. It costs them a single Rex I flash and stays Ghost. That's all it costs for Baron. Superb vision control in the mid game from WE. He got them the dragon earlier, gets them the Baron here. And OMG, they are losing the information warfare in this game. To say that they could hold on to the Hoppy ult after the Baron is down, to potentially use as a, as a disengage to get away from that play, says an awful lot. That Poppy ult can stop you from getting a steal. It can stop the fight from ever transpiring. And WE, serious credit for them for once again just pulling OMG apart. Oh, Angel flashes, keeps him away from the stun from Hung will survive, but I mean, Annie without Flash is, I mean, it's a large minion at this point. <laughs> it, it just feels useless. Ah, uh, that one's gonna be just a gold donation over the other side. Feels like it is. Uh, WE just making a stop to build a bat. Got the best, well, it's not the best stats in the top side anyway from Udyr, but it has just been pedestrian for them. They've walked away from the early game, and it has really felt like OMG have not had much to say about it. They haven't had the vision to say about it. They can't look for the pile on 5v5 team fights yeah. if they don't have the vision. They do not have the infrastructure in wards to fight against WE. Look at all the red dots on the minimap, both wards and Rek'Sai tunnels from yeah. Wayward. And the siege will just continue all day long. Wayward, by the way, 300 gold bounty while 0-0-0 zero, zero, zero in this game. He's been farming up a storm on the side lane. He's over 10 CS per minute on that Rek site, and the amount of threat that he's putting on OMG, it just feels suffocating. Actually, here comes the oh! kick! The kick is found! Xiaofeng gets his team back into the game just as it felt like hope was gone for OMG. Xiaofeng makes his way onto the server. Fofo trying to escape with his life, but I don't think there's a way out of this one. Big damage coming out from Abel as he hops away from the healing. A cube will finish the job. OMG are back on the board. They're gonna get themselves a dragon, and what is vision control to a blind monk? Lee Sin kick in the late game, it is top draw stuff. He does that into a highly mobile AD carry with summoners available with a poppy on the enemy team. That is a top draw Lee Sin play, which might just save the game and the series for OMG. Angel goes out to push out bot side, and OMG extend the timer on this game a little more. He's at WB can't just say uh, that they have to turn up to a soul fight for the next dragon. It's two dragons apiece now, and it's gold on the board. Abel has an infinity edge. He's going to get towards what I'd imagine will be a Lord Dominic's regards after as well. These are two very, very increased item damages um, on, on the new item, on the new patch as well. Extra arm penetration, extra AD, extra crit chance, uh, crit damage rather as well. He's going to be so, so strong. But this is on top of a poppy. How do you find this against the anti-dash champion? Shafang, take a bow. That is clutch. Fantastic kick coming out from him. The flash warthog kick to get on. And honestly, stage is not having the reactions. It feels like they're not even remotely ready for Shafang to make that happen. Two kills in the fight as well. And Shafang, this has not been the best series we've seen in his career. But that just about makes up for it. He's kept OMG in the game now. He's kept them in the series. Now trying to contend as WE look for their Wolves, look for more control in the top side of the map. WE going back to that game plan of playing through vision control, but OMG more confident now to contest them. Uh, well, I think as soon as they get towards three items, that will be a really dangerous moment for WE. I think as soon as you get able with three items, you can blow up that first target really, really strongly. A lot of the AD carry items are buffed up on this patch. Talked about a little bit before, you see that Abel getting more confident walking forwards. Doesn't have the three items yet, but definitely has himself some confidence which wasn't there before. WE, need to be careful. Can't sleepwalk your way into another big fight for OMG. 
you certainly can't. Luckily for OMG, Baron has timed out and there's no neutral up for another couple of minutes. So they have a reprieve from the pressure that has been, let's be honest, it's been tantamount over the last few minutes in the game. WE have really been putting their foot down. But actually, when you look at if we just cut down to brass tacks it's only a 2000 gold lead right now for we yes they have a big advantage when it comes to the amount of space they've gathered they've got a tier two in mid and in bot lane but they're not that far ahead in the game overall no and particularly because stay is not going to be going towards armor kill uh run like armor pen items neither is fo far in terms of magic resist cutting as well cube can be a very strong front line if you look at abel he's going to get himself towards some really high damage sooner or late up. So it feels like if you're playing a straight front to back, maybe OMG have got themselves a decent shot at it. They'd like to take out Stay first. They'd love to do that. Three items, Navori. It's a really strong item on this. Hung caught out. That's a big pick. Hung forced to flash there. His W comes out too. He will survive. And that's Poppy's flash now on cooldown. Obviously, this is a Hex Flash champion. Not the end of the world for him, but a really nice potential pick. And that feels like the way OMG have to play, right? They need picks. They need to find these opportunities to punish. Do. And particularly because you get so much ultimate haste by building the malignants and then the sork shoes as well. It's something like on your ultimate 70 haste and then something like another 10 on top of that from runes as well, potentially too. That's almost half your cooldown of your ultimate. Um, and when you're in towards late game as well, that tip is, is it's already halfway off cooldown. That pick yeah. is very, very easy to do if you don't have to commit your flash to it. Of course, even the boots give you even more flash cooldown. WE, you walk away living from that one. But again, it's a bit of a stat check. You need to be very careful. And just going to do a lot of damage as well. You can see, not going for the uh, the movement speed, not going for the Shirelias there to try and set up picks. He just wants to be able to burst people, and yeah. I think that's the the right decision because these are going to be short fights that OMG wants for themselves. Shielding coming out as the fight for mid cryo continues. Baron is up on the map, and Hung trying to start this fight. Good disengage from OMG, and now with Hung's ultimate on cooldown, perhaps they can fight. That's going to be a good redemption through as well. Redemption, big, big value to reset the table a little bit. Ghost down from Stay and from Cube, so a little bit less mobility. <laughs> Abel, uh, you know, we talked about him maybe going towards him, like the Lord Dominus regards. He's gone for the Phantom Dancer instead. Wants to outrun the fight, use the extra attack speed for extra just continued DPS alongside the Renata. Won't be able to cut through the front line quite as easily, though. Wayward, cutting off the wave again. It has become a bit of an, a bit of an A ramp. We try and look towards priority as the objectives are starting to spawn. Baron's up, Dragon's in 30 seconds. If you get mid lane, it means you can walk kind of in a more safe manner rather than walking through these jungle chokes where WE have vision. That's why you want to push out mid, push out mid, get safely into Oh, it. God. Wayward's behind them, though. This feels so dangerous for OMG. They don't know that he's managed to find the flank, but Wayward just isn't tanky enough. Nearly goes down, ults to safety and flashes out as well. Hung goes in by himself as Cube is tanking the rest of the team. The knockabout from Iwandi, though, denies the follow-up. Stable surviving only just as Abel dives in, but he's exhausted and can't finish the kills. Xiaofeng now trying to get in the mix as well. Abel so close to getting the recess, but the health bars survive for WE. Redemption for sustain, and OMG finally get river control the carries of omg between them do about 12,000 damage in that fight and only one person dies angels down as well but when you've got abel here with so many dps items the baron is going to shred we must find a way to contest here comes fofo his flash pp got is so low at this point but the mantra doesn't land and it means that baron can continue i want he's here hung is here but the smite should come on down it's only just taken one hp on the baron for a sec there as shaofeng now tries to escape he should just be sacrificed abandon ship omg they got the baron they lose their jungler but they walk away with the neutral objective it's another clutch wall stun coming in from the poppy they've been really on point from hung this game WE, they would love to close this series here and now. It's been a long time waiting for Team WE to find a series victory over OMG in the LPL. Last time was 21 summer playoffs, so it's been about two and a half years. Dragon has spawned Baron down for the side of OMG, and because of their retreat, they're not going to be in position really to contest this cleanly. They have to commit some teleports and once again walk over WE Vision. You see that the problem here from the Rex side is that you are just not a hyper tank. Instant CC gets out with the ult and the flash, but very, very lucky to do so. And the Renata ult buys enough space for able to get some really, really good damage down on the other side. Once the big cooldowns have already through, we're starting to see Xiaofeng actually do some big damage in a way that he couldn't in previous games. Once you've got the Poppy W down, once you've got the Rex side kind of out of the equation too, this Lee Sin is actually starting to do a good amount of work in the late game. 
That fight was so close to an ace. Like, if the exhaust isn't there on yep. Able, the split second he's in there, that's an ace. If Angel can finish that kill onto Stay, it could lead to a one fight as well. Wayward spot on award this time. That flank from Wayward to start it off was crucial for WE, but they just can't actually win the fight. Oh, the the kick. numbers has happened again! Stay is caught again. This time he survives. Bomb on his head is taken away, and he goes down anyway. The bomb finishes the job. Detonated. Oh, the bailout isn't going to be enough, though. Shaofeng has fallen. Wayward manages to get out with his life, and suddenly it's one for one. It's one for one, but with the AD carry down, that favors OMG. I don't think they can deal with the damage difference now. Able, we're able to walk up towards that tower. The pop hill clears minions, but not champions. Tower down with the bar. Baron buffs still running, they will have the, the increased kind of durability of the creeps to keep walking forwards. Cube just goes straight underneath the tower as well, hung and tanky enough for this one. Just walks in 1v4 after Cube has separated the rest of his team off. And now, with the staggered death timers, this is an opportunity for OMG to try and finish things out. The mid lane inhib tower going down as Cube just zones everybody away. I don't think OMG are going to push this any further. They'll take them in inhib, they can move up top for a tier 2 if they want. But still, a huge gold swing in their favor. How is Xiao Fang? finding these Lee Sin kicks against this enemy team. Stay, he's been largely very safe in the games uh, that W have played. You can really see though, it's very hard to do so uh, when you've got Lee Sin with this kind of angle on you. He stays a little too close, potentially to the wave. Happens here, yep, he just stays too close. Ward hop, flash kick in. Stay, absolutely obliterated. Yeah. The thing about this Tristana build, there's no Navori for a second bomb in the fight, but with the Infinity Edge, oh my god. The damage on the single target, first target in, is absolutely monstrous from Abel. Takes down that first kill. Yes, Shaofan goes down, but the AD carry on the other side is so much more, more, more worthwhile. Yep. We do now have Lord Dominic's regards coming in for Tristana. So if we do kind of rack up all of the AD carry changes, extra 10% crit damage on that Infinity Edge coming through on that item, extra um, armor penetration coming through from the Lord Dominic's regards as well. I think it's next 30, 35% pen now overall. Abel is an absolute walking Fountain laser. WE cannot afford to let this guy get the free hits off. At least Stay has himself that same item as well on the four item. Zeri. Let's see which AD carry can do the oh. real game winning work. PP cuts caught out. This is a disaster. And he goes down without even using the bailout. Suddenly, OMG, it felt like they were in control. And PP got just steps too far. He had flash, he had bailout, and he just goes down. Goes down, can't even use that flash. So, so important for him to go down there as well. Has Mikhail's and has redemption. Could use a redemption from the grave, but even like not having that Mikhail's on the table, very, very important. WE, do they think the time is now? How much can they get from this? They're using redemption, heals up the minions too. How much can they get out of this? Can they just end the game here? Stay. Needs to survive, needs to not be kicked back, but it's on cooldown right now. With the first tower being whittled away as Q moves in, Shaofang getting some damage down, but Hung is so low. And Abel is just annihilated now. Buzz he's he's dead. up by Wayward! Denied! Naruto not quite landing onto Cube. There's no minion wave. WE still sticking around though. They're gonna go for the next wave instead. Okay, so Angel ults up in just a few seconds' time. Can he use the Tibbers to clear the wave? That might just save the series for OMG. WE would not like to let that happen. WE haven't beaten OMG since summer 2021, but this could be the moment, or maybe not as Hung is caught out. Wayward behind enemy line, stay trying to survive as long as he can. The Chow Fung is going to go down. The bailout's not quite enough to save him. As Cube cannot finish the Zeri, the machine gun is Stay's too alive. strong. Stay survives on one HP. PP God versus the world, and I think the world is a little bit too strong because this is the world's elite stepping up to the fountain. Three Three and one as they take down OMG for the first time in years. And WE move forward to round two of playoffs. OMG, they were ahead of Team WE by a single game score in the regular season. Both finished on eight and eight. There was one game between them. There's two games that separates them here in this series as WE, they slumped in the back end of this split. They were not a team which we had a lot of confidence in, but oh my word, they have marked their authority on this series. I think I won. I think Wayward had fantastic breakout series here after having uh, you know, a great split in general. They were on fine form today. They will move on to face NIP in the next round of the playoffs in the top half of the bracket. Bottom half will start tomorrow as we get ourselves a break on this side. WE, this team has become a really interesting team to watch. If they get